When I was 13, I found out that a relative of mine traveled on the Titanic and she died. And since then, I've been trying to find out a little bit more about her. Often people come to the Roadshow knowing a family story, but they need help making the link. Louise Fahany from Limerick, Ireland is one. She grew up listening to her mother tell of her great aunt tragically losing her life on the Titanic. What's the name you have? Bridget Mary O'Sullivan. And why was Bridget Mary O'Sullivan on the Titanic in the first place? Um, she was travelling over to America to meet with um, two of her sisters and she was travelling with her boyfriend, Joseph Foley. And um, so she was the same age as I am at the moment when she was on the way over there and unfortunately she never made it. It's kind of a heartbreaking story. Bridget and Joseph came from humble backgrounds. The 1911 census of Ireland reveals that 20-year-old Bridget O'Sullivan worked as a domestic servant at Hernsbrook Estate in rural Limerick, owned by the Anglo-Irish family, the Lloyd Aherns. 18-year-old Joseph Foley was recorded as the general farm labourer. It was here where love blossomed. A year later, in 1912, Bridget and Joseph left the estate's employ with everything they had to stake their future in America. This is John Gretham. John, what can you tell us? Well, the, the story of the Titanic is pretty well known. It left Southampton um, in April 1912. It had 2,200 people on board, and when it eventually hit the iceberg, 1,500 of those were killed. Its last port of call before it got out into the Atlantic was Queenstown, as it was known then, now Cove. Almost 120 Irish people got on board, like your grand aunt. Most of them would have been migrants going to New York, um, seeking a better life. And like your grand aunt, most of them would have died on the Titanic. Searching records, hunting down leads can result in amazing and unexpected results. This is what we love doing, solving the mystery, making the link and bringing the story alive. Um, well, we found out something very specific. Apparently, after it struck the iceberg, as it was sinking, she was seen with Joseph Foley almost at the boat deck, almost up at the top. And apparently she decided she had to go back and get her handbag. And of course, Joseph Foley had to go back with her. <gasps> and that was the last anybody ever saw of them. Oh dear. So it's such an ordinary thing. It's happened to everybody. It's happened to everybody's boyfriend and husband <laughs> as well. And it, that's it, that cost them both their lives. Yeah. Whatever was in that handbag was obviously terribly important to them if they thought they were going to make it to the new world. Yeah. And whatever savings they had was probably in yeah. that bag, you know? Yeah. Okay, no, Isn't no, that the sad thing? It is, yeah. Like many Irish people before them, Bridget had family already in the USA and wants to look them up on arrival. In her case, Aunt Nellie O'Sullivan, who lived in New York City, we also found something else that you, you might not be aware of. And um, we traced her sister Nellie in New York. She married a man called Richard Godsell from Cork, and they moved out to Montana, um, out to a place called Deer Lodge near Yellowstone Park. This is the kind of lead we love to find to bring the story forward. And um, we found here uh, a picture of Nellie. This is her taken sometime probably in the 1930s. There is a family resemblance, isn't there? And here's her, her husband, Richard Godsell, an in-law of yours. Yeah. OK. Nice to meet him. It's great to add value to what people may know about their family and connect them to relatives. One of their daughters, Mary, married a man called Sewell and set up a shop in Deer Lodge in Montana. And we have a picture of that here now in the 1950s. You can see there's Sewell's food stores. And not only that, we've managed to trace the family down to the present day. When fantastic. You can, so there is a, a connection again via Bridget back yeah. to, the, to her family in the New World. And just out of curiosity, did they know this story? No. No, they had no, no. idea either. No. My goodness gracious no. me. So, I see that the two ends will meet at last. Yeah, that's brilliant because it just it makes, it makes it more real. Yeah. It's always a thrill to help solve family mysteries. It means so much to people and touches on our nation's history. With Ancestry's help and searching public records, Flipping the angle of the investigation to solve the mystery, find the missing link and prove the claim.
And so will you contact them now when we give you the details, yeah, I think? Yeah, definitely, because um, since I found out, since I, was, since I was 13 and I found out her name and you know, even how much she had paid for her ticket, I was always dying to find out more. So it's, it's brilliant that there is, actually, there is actually a link behind it and there's a person now behind the story. I didn't really know how much the experts could, could actually tell me about it other than maybe her sister's names or something like that. So it's, it's fantastic that they were able to trace it and put me in touch with a real living person. <laughs>